Hey friends, welcome back to the craft castle. I mean my kitchen. Today, let's bling out some shoes. I'm so excited. A few weeks ago, I was at the Creative Asian convention and I was asked if I can bling some shoes and I said, heck yes, I can. So I've already done one to show you what the finished product will look like, but today I'm gonna to show you how to do the other shoe. In total, the entire process took me about six hours, but I'm gonna condense this down real quick and short and sweet for you so you can just get the gist of how to do it all. There isn't a ton of supplies that you're gonna to need to purchase, but there is some. I'm gonna link everything down in the description below, but also I'll show you here. To start, you're gonna need some glue. I'm using the Fusion Tack Adhesive by Super Tight. I put them in a glue bottle for precision tipped gluing. I also have a little fine point syringe as well that I use for this project. The other thing that you need to buy is diamonds or crystals. I picked these up at Crystal Ninja. I'll link her website below. I got three different sizes, SS8, 12, and 16. Then you're also going to need some diamond sorting trays. This is helpful to sort all of your diamonds. I also picked up the Crystal Ninja Katana to help pick up all of those little diamonds. You can tell on the first one that I did that there is like a little bit of black from the logo. I am just going to use chalk marker. I actually ended up using some acrylic paint for this process just to fill in that black logo so you can't see that after the glue dries. There isn't a whole lot of prep work to this project. You just take the tag off and then you get to start blinging. Like I said previously, I chose to do some white acrylic paint to fill in the black of that logo. It's just so it hides it and I really did not like the look of it on my original shoe. So hopefully this works perfect. Now let's get started on the bling process. I'm gonna let that little logo dry and start working on the strap where the circle parts are. All I'm doing is taking a small little bead of glue. You don't need a whole lot of glue for this project. And I'm just going around the circles, letting it kind of dry a little bit. And then I'm taking the smallest crystals that I purchased and I'm putting that around the circles. Here's a close up of the process. Again, very little glue. And I did six small little crystals around each hole. You kind of want to offset them a little bit so they get nice and tight within the circles. I absolutely love this diamond picker upper tool thing. It is my favorite. On one end it has this like wax tip so it picks up the diamonds easier and on the other end there is a needle so you can move around the diamonds if you didn't place them correctly the first time. Moving on to the next strap. Yes, we're doing both straps at the same time. Doing the same process that you did the first time. A little bit of glue, placing the diamonds, and go through every single hole. Now that we got the straps finished and the logo is still not dry, let's start working on the outside perimeter. I am just doing one long line of glue and then adding the dots. Again, I kind of like the glue to be a little bit more tacky and dry, on almost dry. So I do the line of glue, wait a little bit, and then go and place my rhinestones. So again, it's tacky and it doesn't want to slide all over the place. Make sure not knock those rhinestones over because then you'll have a not straight line. Also, the other thing is I'm doing the outside perimeter of entirety and it's the biggest rhinestone that I purchased. Shout out to this little tool again. See that small little area? All I'm doing is I'm putting just a little bit of glue and then I'm shifting the other rhinestones with the base of the needle point of that wand and then I'm putting that small little rhinestone in there and using my fingertip to place it. Now that we got one row done, let's go around and do the same thing with a second row. I am using my middle size that I purchased for the rhinestones, going around the perimeter again, making sure that you're not knocking around your first row and you wanna make sure that these lines are straight because if they start getting crooked, you'll notice it later. Okay, now that the logo is dry, I actually like the way that the acrylic paint dried. All I'm doing is filling in the logo with glue. I'm actually using a little bit more glue than I think I probably should have, but I really wanted to make sure those rhinestones were set in there really good. Um, and then I'm just adding some rhinestones. I'm using the smaller two for this portion. Now that the straps are dry, I'm gonna go back up to the very tip of the straps and I'm just gonna start filling in the diamonds there and then working my way down the shoe to where the main body is. 
Um, I'm using the smaller two mainly for this portion, but if there is like a larger gap, I put one of the big diamonds in there just to fill up some extra space. As you start getting larger and larger with the straps, I do start incorporating the larger diamonds in with the other two just to give it more mixture and then you're not using a whole bunch of little diamonds. Here is a close up of me gluing all of these rhinestones. I absolutely love doing this. It's so therapeutic, but I honestly wish I could probably work this fast in real life. If you notice that your rhinestones aren't laying um, right side up, just give the tray a little shake. Don't get overzealous like that I did because look, now I have a rhinestone mess all over my counter. Back to gluing. This project is a lot of monotony. So if you've gotten the process down, you've figured out how to do it. I am just filling up this entire thing with no pattern. Um, the beauty of this shoe is that I'm using no pattern. So try not to create a pattern when you're placing all of these diamonds and just start filling in your spaces with a whole bunch of rhinestones. Yay, we got that one little side finished. Here I am just counting the holes and I'm getting ready to place the um, straps inside of the buckle. I don't want to do the entire other side of it, just wherever the buckle, you can see the white leather through the buckle. Shout out to this glue. Do you see that? I am manipulating it and moving it around. This not, has not even dried for the full curing time. And look, I'm not losing one diamond. This is amazing. I love it. This glue that I'm using, that SuperTac Fusion Adhesive, it is a full cure for 24 hours and then it's waterproof up to 72 hours. But I mean, look, I am putting that buckle in with a strap and I'm not losing any diamonds. This is amazing. Okay, back to gluing. I am using my small little needle to fill in that. It's very small little gaps. I'm using the smallest diamonds and I'm just going in and filling in just like you did with everything else on that shoe. Again, with the therapeutic therapy, <laughs> it is actually kind of boring when you get close to the end because you've now been doing this for over an hour and your like, neck is hurting, your shoulders are hurting. It's okay to take a break. I am not that crafter. I cannot break when I am doing a craft. I have to hurry up and finish. I need to see that finished product now. Here is an in real life demonstration of how slow that process is. It is agonizing how slow it is. And then watch me drop that shoe and lose all those rhinestones. Oh my gosh, I was so mad. I'd like to say that I did not use a sentence enhancer here, but I did. My kids would be so ashamed of me. Ugh. So picking up all those rhinestones, yay, not Okay, now that I've done cleaned up that mess, back to gluing and placing rhinestones, gluing and placing rhinestones. Same process that I did with the first, the first side of the shoe where I did a large diamond in one row th uh, down the perimeter, doing the same thing for this, but then also doing a second row of the smaller diamonds for the second row and then filling in randomly with no pattern for the rest of the shoe. Just in case you wanted to watch me in real life, glue these rhinestones. It is a slow and tedious process. Again, it is agonizing how slow it is, but you know what? Eventually you'll get there and it'll be a finished product that you're so excited for. I know you don't care to watch me glue in real life because I'm sure if you're watching this, you're about ready to do the same. So here I am in fast mode, just gluing and stamping all of those rhinestones. At one point in time in this project, I did think that I was gonna have to buy more rhinestones. And I'm glad this, I am just doing a voiceover and not having you listen to me because I probably said 300 times, crap, I'm gonna run out of rhinestones. Crap, I'm gonna run out. Thank goodness I did it because I would have been so mad. Placing those final rhinestones into place. Hallelujah, I am done. Thanks you all for sticking around and watch me bling my Birkenstocks. That small little black area, if you're worried about it, uh, where the original shoe has that logo, I am gonna pop off the original rhinestones, fill in with white acrylic paint, and put more rhinestones in there so it won't be ugly anymore. But I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and it entices you to bling out your own shoes. All right, y'all, I will see you later.